Well, this morning we're delighted to have a special guest preacher for our Father's Day, and that's Linda's and my grandson, Evan. He was here a while ago, and this picture is him sharing his uh, testimony after he returned from uh, six months away with the ministry Youth with a Mission, and he was uh, telling us in this particular Sunday that he was here. That was back in March, right, Evan? And he came and told us about his uh, experiences, <laughs> excuse me, working uh, in Paraguay was where they had their ministry uh, uh, as missionaries. Well, this morning, he is going to come and share the word, and he's entitled his message, Servant Leadership. So, Evan, would you please come to the front? Let's give El Evan a real welcome. Get back in my car 
ready for the drive back home. And it wasn't it wasn't anything special, it was just another drive. I turned up some worship music and I got on my way. But as I was worshiping, about ten minutes into the drive, I found myself weeping and I had no idea why. The presence of God in the car was just really heavy at that moment. And so I continued to worship for about twenty to thirty minutes and and uh, again, just constantly weeping. Um, at the end of those 20 to 30 minutes, I unintentionally started shouting things like, God, I surrender, I surrender my future, I want you to use me. And almost instantly, my, my focus of what was in front of me or around me kind of just disappeared and he showed me this vision. And this vision was like a, a sequence of a few different scenes. And the first scene was I took a, a friend for coffee at Tim Hortons in Stonewall and asked him to be my partner in ministry. The second scene was in our, our backyard at our house. We were around a campfire and we had about 50 senior youth, young adults, 16 to 25 in age range, 50 of us worshiping um, and studying the Bible. And then the exact same thing happened at New Life Church in Stonewall. Um, and at both of these events was, was a guy I used to play hockey with and he'd fallen away from the faith after his, his parents split up and uh, has been going down a really rough road since. And so I was shocked to see in the vision, see him at, attending these events. And, uh, and then the last kind of scene of this vision was uh, the same group of people going to places like car meets and uh, sporting events and whatever else, like in public places and evangelizing. Uh, and to close the vision, God told me, he was like, I want your summer ministry to be in Manitoba. And I was absolutely shocked. And I was fully devoted to moving to BC. I had everything laid out, everything was perfectly planned, so I thought. And so I get home. I book a return flight, and I ask this friend to go for coffee. As we're going for coffee, I tell him, I say, I don't really know what's supposed to come of this conversation. This is what happened. Yeah, that's, that's about it. And um, as a blizzard outside grew, the conversation didn't seem to be anything special. It was just another hangout time, I guess you could say. And so we left that evening uh, maybe almost confused. It was, it was nice to catch up, but it didn't really lead anywhere. Right? I thought this was supposed to be some big, extravagant, you know, vision-fulfilling moment, but it was really just another time for coffee. Right? Little did I know that that blizzard that started that evening would uh, require my friend to go in and clear snow the next day. And he texted me that next evening saying he was working with a guy I used to play hockey with. And he, the guy I played hockey with was asking all sorts of questions about the Bible, just out of the blue. The timing was incredible, and I was absolutely shocked to hear this news. And this was just the beginning. Uh, I believe it was one or two Sundays after that happened. Uh, we were, I was sitting at church and my brother turns to me. He says, I think I'm going to start a Bible study with, with one or two guys. I said, yeah, sure, that's a good idea. I didn't really think too much of it. And then after the last song of the service, he turns to me again and he's like, actually, I think, I think I'm going to open it up to anyone else who wants to come. Sure, yeah, again, I didn't really think too much of it. It's another Bible study good idea. And then there was a bunch of us youth in the youth room downstairs in Stonewall and we were just hanging out and he brings up this idea to everyone else that was at the service there. And he starts describing what it's going to look like and he says we can gather in our backyard we can, we can have a campfire we'll worship and we'll study the Bible and then it clicked for me and I was like oh this is really familiar I've seen this before. And basically that brings us to where we're at today because uh, it's, yeah, we're, we're kind of caught up and, and uh, 
I'm just super encouraged to see how God's going to continue to work. And I know he's going to work this morning in someone here today. I know he has, he's got some sort of divine appointment with, with one of you or more than one of you. As I've been preparing this sermon for the past two weeks or so, every single time it came up in conversation or I thought about it or I did some sort of research, um, I would experience some of the worst spiritual warfare I've ever experienced, and it was only ever related to this specific sermon. And so I think God has something to say through these words to one of you today. So I'm excited to see um, how he does that. So very quickly, I want to I pray over the church for that reason. God, I thank you so much for, for this time and for these tentative years that uh, we'll hear what you have to say. I pray over the words I'm about to speak, that, uh, that anything I say is, is removed or forgotten about, and anything you say will stick forever. I thank you for um, the word that you've given us, and uh, I pray in Jesus' name that any uh, spirit that is not yours be cast out today. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read First uh, Corinthians 9, verses 16 to 27 again. Uh, there's what my dad read. I'm going to be reading from the ESV version as well. So if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside of the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, the wheat and imperishable. So So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Now, I, I chose this Sunday to preach. I had a few options, and I chose this Sunday to preach because I, have, I feel I have a call in my life to lift the standard of a man. I, I, I thought Father's Day is the perfect Sunday for that. And uh, so today I want to touch on a certain trait that I think a man should carry very intentionally. I've titled that trait Servant Leadership. And I really like this title because it's interesting. It almost seems like it contradicts itself at first glance. How can you be a servant and a leader at the same time? It's like two different ends of the totem pole. I I first heard these two words put together while I was at at YWAM. And I was racking my brain on on what it meant and how, how you live that out. Um, as I was continuing to do some research in, in how to be a better man in my everyday life, uh, I looked into some, looked for some examples. I figured Jesus Christ would be the best example to look at. Well, it seemed I made a pretty good guess because it didn't take me long to see what servant leadership looked like in a practical example of a man. We see all through his Jesus' life how he's able to lead people down the narrow path to God simply by serving them, by washing their feet, by showing that they are a significant and valuable created being. While while I was uh, studying this, (coughs) verse 19 really stuck out. Uh, For though I am free from all, I made myself a servant to all, and I might win more of them, as well as 23. I do it for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. I, I think it's, it's, this is an example, as Paul is writing, 
of such a selfless and, and beautiful love. We see he has been set free from everything. He is a completely free man, but he makes himself a servant to people so that they too can experience the, the blessings of the gospel that Paul will, will soon experience. And I think it's uh, that is the definition of servant leadership. We have an end goal that we have to set our eyes on, and we too should be eager to bring people along with us. In, uh, in verse 16, we see um, the necessity that we have. For if I preach the gospel, it gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. When I read this, there are two other scriptures, or two other passages that come to mind. Uh, the first one is Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. And it's, it's not that I want to... I don't want to touch too much on this verse because um, I could go down a very deep rabbit trail. Um, but I think it's significant to mention how um, Paul is, is not ashamed of the gospel and neither should we because it is a necessity. It's our job that we should be, should be preaching this. Um, Matthew 28, 18 to 20 also talks about it. And uh, as Jesus is just about to ascend into heaven, and he's giving us the great commission. He says, starting in verse 18, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What's the first word in verse 19? It's go. That's, it's such a significant two-letter word. It's, it's our action. It's, what we, it's our instruction. It's our purpose. It's our necessity to fulfill this commandment. As, uh, as we continue to read what this calling is, maybe you're wondering... What is the gospel? And if that's a question that you're asking yourself today, I'm honored to be the first one who <coughs> shares what the gospel is with you. Uh, the gospel, the word itself, means good news. And it's good news because of the story that it holds behind it. We believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and he created man and woman in his image. And everything was perfect for dwelling with God and um, everything was it was all peace. It was perfect. And one of the one of the beautiful gifts that God gave us uh, in this creation was the gift of free choice. Now, unfortunately, we we took advantage of this gift and we chose to disobey God, and uh, that brought sin into the world. And this sin brought death into the world, and we were no longer able to dwell in the presence of God. But, but the good news is God had a, a plan all along to save us. Even though we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he loved us still. And uh, because Jesus had lived a perfect and blameless life, we've been able to uh, accept the gift that he's given us to, to receive this gift of the, the price fully paid for us. And um, regardless of what we did, uh, maybe you're, you're still, still struggling with an addiction. Um, we know that Christ died for us even still. Maybe you're still struggling with um, loving someone. Maybe you, you have a hard time loving someone. Christ still died for you too. And uh, whoever believes in him will have eternal life. John 3.16 says that. And this is what we believe. This is the gospel. Now that uh, now that we have that information, we can go ahead and we can fulfill the great commission by uh, taking the great commandment to its to its fullest extent. The great commandment being, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's I, I 
I say these words to hopefully encourage you and to remind you what we do as a Christian, what we do as believers. Um, we're not here to to blend in, to be like everyone else, right? We're here to, we're called to live a higher lifestyle. We're called to to be the people that walk down the narrow path. And we, we're called to be the servant leaders that people need in their lives. And I think as a man in our households, as a father, we're called to to be the one that sets that example first. We're called to take that initial step, to take the initiative and to show people what a servant leader looks like, to what Jesus would look like today. And so, uh, as I close like the message, I want to ask again the fathers in the room to stand up. Amen. We're going to pray over each of you. Amen. And anyone else who um, would be sitting down, I want you to extend a hand um, to the closest father near you. And as I pray, I want you to pray with me. God, I thank you so much for, for each father in this room. Yes. I thank you for uh, the blessings that you put in their lives with their families. Yes. I thank you for the example that you can show through them to each of their lives. I pray that you encourage them today. Yes. Bless them with an abundance of strength and wisdom. And show them how to be servant leaders for your glory as they continue to fulfill the great commission. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Evan. God bless you. Wonderfully done. We appreciate you. Let's give a, a round of applause. God guide and lead you in your future, whatever his plans are for you. May his will be done in your life. Thank you for ministering to us, and God bless you. All right, we're going to have the music team come, Mike and Paul, and they're going to lead us in our final song.